Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Inverted Fullback. This is part two of a 3-4-2-1 presentation. That was a little recap on the first part which was looking at in possession and how does Lucien Favre beat the XG model? How do his teams overachieve consistently year on? So this, this presentation is going to be looking at the defensive out of possession principles. What's unique about their play? So to start off with, some of the listed above here are some of the key principles. Split the pitch, force the play wide into overloaded areas, prevent play into half space lanes, Prioritise passes that are diagonal, in other words, to prevent the diagonal to the ball pass. Get players set for the counter-attack via blindside positioning. And as such, leave the opposition with the following options. They can go long, play negative, into high pressure where they're, where they're underloaded, or best of all, they look to play horizontal passes. Why is that the most important? Stay tuned and I'll cover it in this presentation. So first of all, let's have a look at how they would press in restart dead ball situations from the front. It's not an easy system to press in, so we're going to look at how Dortmund did it against Schalke last week. Just for context, Schalke are matched up in terms of formation, so this is looking at how they would press against a back three. So play to one side. First of all, lock off the central midfielder and lock down those half space lanes. The nine will split the pitch. Okay, then other players will come in here. They may try and create an overload in this situation. The nine has to lock down here. And if you look now, the 9-11 are very well positioned from blind sides where they can press and counter-attack and penetrate the box. This is going to force them to potentially play wide of where they're going to overload the situation. Naturally, it's going to be a 2v1, but if you look wider context, the centre-back can step and they create ball side superiority with good intensity. This becomes a pressure zone. So here's a good example. Preventing the pass into the half space lane, no vertical pass. The diagonal to the ball is here. They have to prioritise preventing that. So the nine has to recognise that the diagonal ball is on and lock down this player, which he does. And then, of course, you can see ball side superiority, four versus three. And not only do they have ball side superiority, players position for the counter-attack, where if they do win it back, which they almost do, they're in great positions to or instantly look to get in behind. Also, look again, diagonal to the ball here, passing lanes. Look at how Dortmund are really good at closing off those passing lanes. Once the play goes out wide, you can see the wing back joining in. And also, again, look at the positioning of his body as he presses to try and prevent this play being switched out of this pressure area so that it's easy for Dortmund to control the opposition. The technique within the press of the number nine to control him into half a pitch from round the back. In doing so, he's taken out two players while also making the diagonal to the ball even still high risk. So he's almost covered three players in that press. Now, this is what they're looking for. This is a key principle. Look for horizontal and vertical passes. Offer the opposition those. They are so important to Dortmund's strategy and why they're so efficient. Look how the PSG player refuses to play that pass that looks on and instead plays what will become a safer pass in reality in keeping the ball to the touchline. I'll show why in my presentation as we go along some more examples of this and why it's so important to their strategy. Look, so here you can see again, this is the ball that lets them sets them free, a pass that sets them free, but they can't play it because he's blocked. So he has to play a more horizontal pass. Horizontal for a counter-attacking side are gif wrap presence. This is what they're looking for Dortmund to exploit. Because when you intercept a horizontal pass, you are on the front foot with fast players that can carry while the opposition are wide open. I mentioned at the start of this presentation from personal experience that pressing in a 3-4-2-1 or often it becomes a 5-2-3 is actually quite a difficult system to press high in. It's a good central block counter-attacking system. It's got vulnerabilities. And if you're going to do a presentation on how to play a certain system, it's equally important to know where its own vulnerabilities are and where your weak spots are. So as an example here, you can see Haaland's taken out two players. He's pressing well but he can't stop the pass into the central midfielder. There's going to be plenty of times when you play this system and you can't get pressure on a central midfielder because the midfield line can't always keep up with play. And this is what leaves you a little bit open and exposed because your tens are quite wide. And as you see as play progresses, there's little pockets in between those tens down the sides of the two holders that are really there to exploit. Now, for the average team that's not playing PSG, it's quite straightforward in that a lot of the time you can use wingbacks to come and press down the sides and cover these little pockets and gaps. However, when you play PSG and Thomas Tuchel's the coach, you can see how he's using two players to occupy those wingbacks to prevent and lock down those players from being able to go and engage. I'm going to show you examples of them defending in a central block here, which is really essential to Dortmund's strategy. You can see here four players back behind the line of the ball outside the block and only one person to connect with inside the block a single pivot which I think is a huge mistake against Dortmund a massive mistake not against every team but against Dortmund in particular because you are naturally going to horseshoe and you're naturally going to be forced out wide like in these examples so you can see Schalke here 
fall into the trap, outnumbered situation, not easy to play through. But I want you to pay attention to the midfield line. It never breaks. The, ho the footprint, the horizontal footprint, is very, very comfortable. They're not having to cover huge distances. At no point is this line broken. They're just comfortable in moving and waiting to engage on their own terms. Forced out wide and eventually they'll win it back. And sitting in a low block and adjusting the block positioning is another unique part of Faber's strategy. And the timing with which to drop those blocks is really important. Usually identifying and pinpointing the moments when he sees the opposition are starting to overcommit and starting to perhaps be at their most vulnerable, he makes really clever adjustments in games. So we'll now go back to the vulnerabilities of this system, even in a central block. And we'll go to PSG, the only side in the last nine matches to beat Dortmund. But they were much more intelligent and had a much smarter approach. And I'm going to identify here, they started with a box, a double pivot approach. And this was really crucial to the strategy of being able to outplay the second midfield line. Because what they can get now is players that can move away and draw players out, while still retaining a pivot to outplay and a triangle to outplay. What you also get with this is better counter-pressing insurance policy so we know these players want to counter-attack from narrow positions we've got players now that can pick them up in the transitional moments and you can quickly create a two versus one from any direction or three versus one from any direction on Haaland so you can see the players moved away here allows them to progress up the pitch create little openings of space Dortmund's midfield line is getting pushed back because they don't want to allow positive actions between the line, allowing PSG to gradually move up the pitch together with little openings like this now I'm going to maintain again even with PSG, playing vertical and horizontal passes, which you can't avoid, but you can see just as an example, it's a dangerous game against one of the world's greatest counter-attacking sides. You do not want to play vertical passes that are easy to intercept and predictable, or horizontal passes that are easy and predictable. So you can see again the, the, whole, the double pivot. Yes, the play goes out wide. There's a little bit of better connectivity into playing here, but the vertical pass again is a very high-risk one for a side like Dortmund. But look, this is the difference instantly be able to prevent and nullify the counter-attack transition that Schalke were unable to do that I presented in the first one. Here you can see advantages again of the double pivot. You get a 1v non or you break that midfield line. It either has to step to press and he has to concede space and work so much harder or they get a free player. Equally, another solution might be where you send the second 10 across. Okay, that's fine, but you're going to be able to you're going to concede positional superiority one way or another. They're going to have that numerical supremacy on the on the other side, and you can see because they got the one v non, they can now progress play through diagonal passes again. Something we didn't really see Schalke do. You can now see these little moments where there is one to two players capable of getting in behind Dortmund's back line. Borussia Dortmund are one of the best counter pressing sides in the world. It's their ability to control the pitch. Now, Borussia Dortmund win over 60% of their duels. Intensity, desire, winning the ball, winning those battles all over the pitch. But one of the things I'm going to maintain is it's not really a duel or a fair duel in my eyes if it's a three or four versus one way you're surrounded. And this is where I think the key to success is, the structure. So see example here. You can clearly see a route out here. Do they have the ability to stop this? The desire, determination... Because right at this moment in time, there is only two players within a five metre radius. Looking at closer to a 10 metre radius, you've got three players. Okay, And on the periphery, you can argue there's only about five players in total in view here. This is favourable to Schalke on the outset. But because this player works so hard, in less than three seconds, they've got pressure on the ball and they've cut their only progressive passing play out. And now this player, you can see there are four or five players within a 10 metre periphery.